breakfast, absolutely, I'm going to eat. I'm going to do high protein. Like eggs and then maybe some bread, like Ezekiel bread. And then I try to always have a banana for when I get to the audition and probably have lots of snacks, but if I need to get a second meal, I will. It seems a little funny to talk about live auditions right now, but at some point, Orchestras will start up again, audiences will come back, and a backlog of orchestra auditions will be announced from all the openings that have been building up. So if you are auditioning and trying to get a job before, you're still on the audition circuit. You have to keep your chops up and you have to think about how to practice and how to prepare for orchestra auditions so that when auditions are announced, you're ready. And one of the most overlooked parts about audition preparation is audition day. How to actually approach audition day itself. Rather than tell you about how I approach audition day, which I'm going to do next week, today I want to talk to three different Detroit Symphony musicians to understand exactly how they approach audition day. And they're very different from one another, which shows you that everybody can approach audition day in a different way. There's no one size fits all or universal approach to exactly how to go through audition day itself. So I teamed up with Noah Kageyama from the Bulletproof Musician website to interview these three musicians while we were in Detroit. Today we have Caroline Code from the viola section, Sarah Lewis from the oboe section, and Amanda Blakey from the flute section. Sarah and Amanda are both Audition Hacker alumni. And we asked them a bunch of our burning questions about exactly how they approach Audition Day. And today I want to give you a summary about how they approach Audition Day differently. Noah and I did these interviews because actually this coming week we are doing enrollment for our audition boot camp. Enrollment starts tomorrow and you can find out all the details at robnopper.com bootcamp. So my first question was this. What do you do in the week leading up to the audition? I'm really methodical and I'm very organized. So prior to this one week, I probably have been on some sort of rotation with the repertoire. There's probably an A set of repertoire and a B set. And so every other day I'm going through the, the lists. So week of, now I'm ramping it up. I hope at that point, I've already done a bunch of mock auditions. Certainly for Detroit Symphony, I remember. It was more mock auditions than I ever thought I would need. And if you think one or two are good, you're kidding yourself. I still try to do a lot of recording, and I think I'm, at that point, I'm trying to cover more excerpts during the day than just, just focusing a lot on, say, two or three excerpts and trying to go through quite a bit so I'm covering the whole list every two or three days and also really finishing touches on my reads lots of fundamentals especially the day before and two days before I find for me it's really helpful to do a lot of long tone exercises to get everything working really well and mentally I'm just going to write down every possible possibility that I'm nervous about <laughs> and then make a plan to prevent that from happening. And then I'm also going to write down every possibility that I'm excited about and then see what I can do to have that possibility actually happen, which I found really helpful. So mocks, absolutely. Once I hit a week, maybe on the week of, um, you know, a week from the audition, I might do my last big mock for someone I really respect. And then from there, take it all let it just sort of marinate and just start to focus on the keyword, really focus on the keywords. And, and also I really like maybe playing along with some of the recordings because that's kind of what makes me fall in love with it and stop thinking so analytically. And that's the space you want to be in and you want to stop, you know, overanalyzing each little nuance and, and technicality and you want to just start to enjoy it and have fun and let it go and think musically. Um, more from the heart, artistically, you know. Next question. How much sleep do you get the night before an audition, and what do you do the day of before you go to the hall? Well, for me, it's probably a guaranteed not a good night's sleep the night before, so I'm going to make sure that I've slept pretty well for the couple days prior. So wake up, for me, I'm an early riser. I like to get up early. I'm going to do my same regular routine. I'm going to get up and probably have a cup of coffee and um, probably hit the workout room. Um, if I'm in a hotel, I might just do a workout in my own room, but at least a good hour of that, that's probably including quite a lot of stretches. But again, for me, I like to be physically tired. I think sleep is really important. So if you can sleep as much as you can, that's awesome. But at the same time, it's hard because you don't want to feel this pressure that you have to sleep a lot. I would wake up at the time that I 
felt comfortable waking up and usually had a routine of waking up, if at all possible. If I had a really early audition, I would try to get in the routine of waking up really early. Um, so yeah, I would try to get a good night's rest and be really hydrated and um, eat a healthy meal. For me, it's helpful to to do something like yoga and just really getting that tension out and get some circulation going. Yeah, I guess just find what's best for you that day. With some people it might be, I don't know, jumping jacks or basketball or something and just to get yourself in that really good place. So if the audition is like midday or afternoon, I will let myself sleep as much as I need to. I love sleep, so. <laughs> I would say Ideally, I've also done at least 30 minutes of yoga or breathing. There's some type of stretching. Loosen everything up, but especially as a wind player, the breathing is really important. Next question, what do you eat on audition day? Breakfast, absolutely, I'm going to eat. I'm gonna do high protein and uh, probably fruit and no carbs. I think probably like a little bit of protein, like eggs and then maybe some bread, like Ezekiel bread. I try to get a decent breakfast. I usually try to get something with eggs in it for the protein. And then I try to always have a banana for when I get to the audition and probably have lots of snacks, but if I need to get a second meal, I will. So I usually earn the side of eating more than I think I need to because I tend to, if I get nervous and I'm hungry, then I tend to get a little bit, um, you know, maybe more nervous even or possibly shaky. My next question was, so it's so easy to get distracted while you're backstage. You're in the group warm-up room, you might see some friends. It's hard to stay focused, so how do you do that? So what I've learned is actually you wanna be super collegial backstage, kind and appropriate and professional, but not overdoing it with people. So really, I found keeping to myself was really sort of best and saying to friends who of course you're going to see at the audition, it's really nice to see you and I'll talk to you later. So for me, best game plan is to just stay very focused on, on what I'm doing and stay more quiet. I guess in that moment I'm imagining back when I took an audition for a major symphony orchestra that had the group practice room. And I remember thinking, this room is so loud. I could add to it by being loud also and sort of block out the sound that way, or I could just sort of pull everything inward and stay focused on the clarity of what I needed to do with each excerpt, with the clarity of my 10 to 12 minutes on stage, with my breathing, keeping all that focused. I think it's very easy to get outside yourself and more challenging to stay really focused on what you you are going to do to your best degree at that point. Only having useful thoughts in those moments I think is really important. So just a lot of mental focus and using all your mental energy and directing that towards what you need to do to play your best. I try not to listen too intently because I don't want to get too sucked in or start to think like, oh, maybe I should do that with my phrase or shape or vibrato. I try to just appreciate it and kind of let it go and focus back if I need to center or just maybe even just say, there's no reason I can't sound my best as well and just kind of affirm that I sound great. It's a tough process for everyone. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, when I hear someone playing really well, I'm just like happy for them. Yeah. Or try to be, yeah. try to make sure I'm like, we're all in this. <laughs> yeah. My last question was just, how do you stay positive and keep a good mindset as you're preparing for the audition? And the only thing that you're there to do at the audition is to do your best and hopefully win, but to do your best. I mean, maybe the win that day is getting on the sub list. Maybe the win that day is getting over, you know, a, a block, a roadblock that you had about a particular excerpt. So it can come in many different forms of, of win. I think that's really important to set an intention that you want for the performance or for the audition. So when, you know, when you might start overthinking details, you just get back to this intention and let that be your guide. I probably just start to also up the self-encouragement, self-talk, really make sure that positive self-talk is just constant because I know it's easy to start to get a little bit anxious um, or feel almost the adrenaline start to kick in a little bit. And I just try to think of being like my own best friend. Like what would I say to a friend who's about to take an audition? I wouldn't feel guilty for, you know, doing something maybe I wouldn't ordinarily do in all the weeks of really intense training. Try to kind of be good to myself.
I really want to thank Caroline, Sarah, and Amanda for helping us understand more deeply how professionals approach audition day. If you want to hear the full interviews, Noah Kagiyama is publishing them one by one this week on his podcast, The Bulletproof Musician Podcast, or you can go to bulletproofmusician.com. And next week I'm doing a video all about how you can develop and plan out your audition day approach that's unique to you and your personality and your strengths and weaknesses. In fact, if you want to improve your audition preparation process, not just about your audition day plan itself, but how you prepare all the way from when you get the list to the day of the audition. If you want to work on that process so when auditions start being announced again, you are totally ready, you should think about joining our audition boot camp and enrollment starts tomorrow. You can check out all the details at robnopper.com slash bootcamp. All right, if you like this video, hit the thumbs up below, please subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in the next video.